Hi, my name is Ellen Long and I'm the administrative assistant for the Conformable Decoders Research Group at the MIT Media Lab. Um, my duties include various administrative tasks around the office, but in a clean room context, I mostly help with ordering and purchasing various chemicals and lab supplies, um, and also chemical inventory and um, just general lab maintenance. Um. Hi, uh, my name is David Sadat, and I'm the uh, lab manager for the Conformable Decoders Research Group. And my main responsibilities are to oversee the day-to-day -day operations of the facility, as well as providing uh, advanced troubleshooting and yield issues of uh, equipment usage, as well as processing of the microfabricated devices. Yeah, so... Today we're going to be taking you on a brief tour of um, the academic clean room that we have here at the Media Lab, which is nicknamed the Yellow Box for obvious reasons. Um, we are going to ex start by explaining some basic background information, such as um, why it was built the way it's built, um, why it has that transparent nature to it, and also um, how it has that distinct yellow color. So to provide some insight on this background info, we're going to pass it off to the PI of this group, Professor Jananda Devran. My name is Jananda Devran. I am a junior faculty at the MIT Media Lab since January 2017. I direct a research group called Conformable Decoders. The Media Lab's cleanest lab space, which has a nickname Yellow Box, is the first of its kind clean room at the MIT Media Lab, devoted to our group's exploration of novel materials, device designs, and fabrication strategies to create micro and nanoscale electromechanical systems with mechanically adaptive features, which allow intimate integration with the objects of interest. Um, so what's special about our lab, the yellow box clean room? is the cleanliness of the entire facility regarding the air quality, um, which has been filtered for airborne dust particles. Um, our microfabricated devices are made with very tiny feature sizes on the scale of micrometers. Um, a micron, for instance, is uh, the scale that we normally measure things like red blood cells or bacteria or hair thickness. At this scale, uh, tiny dust particles, which are on the same order of magnitude of our microfabricated devices with their tiny features, oftentimes um, have the ability to land on our devices, which basically ruins um, any experiment that we're doing. So therefore, um, our sensitive devices require a clean room facility environment in which um, the space that we're working in um, can ensure uh, an environment that's free of dust particles, has a, has a constant air pressure and uh, temperature is steady and so forth. Uh, for instance, outdoor ambient air um, contains dust particles on the order of magnitude of millions, 35 million dust particles to be exact. So for instance, if I was to take a uh, box, a one cubic foot box, and if I was to trap the ambient air outside or even in the office space, that box would contain 35 million dust particles inside of it. Now, when we go inside the yellow box facility, our yellow box facility is rated at um, something called a class 1000 clean room. And that basically means that if we were to take that same box, close it, and then count the amount of dust particles contained inside of it, we would actually only have 1,000 dust particles per cubic foot at the half micron um, feature size. So that's 1,000 versus 35 million or so. Basically, what we make in here is almost guaranteed to be safe from contaminants and particles that may land and kill the devices. Another really cool feature about our yellow box is that we use 5S methodology as a system of organization and management in there. It was inspired by the Toyota production system, which uh, Toyota is one of the leading auto manufacturers, and it's largely in part because they implement these lean principles such as 5S. Um, so what is 5S? 5S is a color-coded system um, where items and areas are assigned different colors based on their functionality. So for example, in our clean room, 
Um, the color orange symbolizes information. The color white symbolizes machinery and equipment. And the color, you know, if you see black and yellow, it means proceed with caution. That area might pose a health risk to personnel. So it's very visually intuitive and based on visual cues, which is cool. Um, I know from my perspective as an admin, I had never stepped foot in a clean room environment before working here. And it was really just easy to be able to learn these visual cues before ever stepping foot into the clean room because I knew what I was looking for. Um, 5S also visually like demarcates where each and every item in our clean room goes. So it's very easy to tell right off the bat if, if something is missing or misplaced. And other than just the intuitiveness, there are other benefits such as um, cost benefits and um, eliminating e deficiencies in our lab that um, we'll discuss. 5S has helped us across many different categories. In chemical consumption, spending was reduced by 41% between 2018 and 2019. In material consumption, spending was reduced by 52% between 2018 and 2019. And in terms of research productivity, we saw a 116% increase in the number of microfabricated devices. Now we're going to take you inside of our yellow box clean room and it's access restricted so we have to use our MIT IDs to do this. As you can see we have standard operating procedures for everything including our gowning process. Um, this chart here walks you through a step-by-step -step procedure on how to gown up. As you can see, it's demarcated with the orange tape indicating that it's uh, information. And the step-by-step -step process for the gowning procedure is meant to minimize any skin-to-skin -skin contact with the clean room as best we can. First, put on a bouffant to cover up your hair. Next, put on a beard cover. Next, don a pair of nitrile gloves. Next, locate your gown from your assigned cubby. Don the gown, putting legs through first, followed by arms. Next, don a hood. Make sure to tuck it in tightly. Zip up so that hood and gown are secured. Next, put on boots. Finally, put on a pair of clean room goggles to protect your eyes. Check yourself in the mirror to make sure that everything is tucked in, zipped and fas fastened, and then you're good to go. So um, this here is the uh, mask aligner. Mask aligner is a part of the microfabrication process where we uh, perform photolithography to define the features and patterns of our uh, microfabricated devices. Basically, the idea is that we coat our substrates with a uh, light-sensitive UV polymer material, and that material is then um, exposed under UV light using this machine. Now, what this machine allows you to do is it allows you to incrementally, within micron nano resolution, to position your device relative to the pattern that you want to create. So that way you can create complex 3D structures with a very uh, small micron feature size. And the way it works is by uh, selectively allowing you to expose UV light onto some areas of the uh, substrate 
but not the others. And that's accomplished through um, the masks that we use. So the masks that we use here kind of allow some of the UV light to penetrate through and not others. And that's based on the uh, shapes and the patterns that we're trying to create. So this is ultimately what it would look like. Once we have a substrate in, we're ready to expose. Basically what I would do is go ahead and um, I would set up the uh, tool and once we're ready to expose, I'll show you, we would hit expose and the UV light would shine. So this here is called the uh, spin coder. Spin coder is what allows us to deposit the uh, UV sensitive polymers onto the substrate in a very conformal and uh, even manner. So basically what we do is we take our silicon wafer and then we place it onto this chuck. And that chuck, when we hit start, it creates a vacuum to hold the substrate down in a way that we're not necessarily holding physically at the top, but we're just kind of sucking from the bottom of the substrate. And then this will then rotate at very high RPMs so that the uh, material, the liquid polymer that we deposit on top of the substrate will then spin very quickly and kind of create an even film around on the wafer. And that's how we make uh, photolithography and we have substrates ready for uh, UV patterning. This is the specimen prep area of our clean room. This is where our devices kind of come to live after they've been microfabricated on the microfab side. Um, and you can see here, these are some ongoing projects that our researchers are working on right now. Okay, so now, um, this, this here is our laser vibrometer. It's made by a company called Polytech. And basically what the laser vibrometer does is it allows us to take non-contact vibrational measurements of our um, devices that we fabricate in the uh, microfab clean room. So in this room, like, like Alan said, we do the characterization and this is where our devices come to live. Here is where we come to test them. And using this tool, it's laser-based, so we take measurements without uh, touching the device because we don't necessarily want to touch a, a very micro device because we cannot take accurate measurements in such a way. Our device features are very small, so therefore we use a laser to do the uh, vibrational measurements, and, and this is where we come to do the characterization. This here is our reactive ion etcher. Basically, it's a method for dry etching of our um, microfabricated devices. So what happens here is we um, open the chamber, we close the chamber, put our device inside, and we strike a plasma that um, essentially uh, allows us to um, physically bombard the uh, target area of interest, and that in turn etches material away in a very, very small um, micro scale level. So when we remove the device and we do the further processing of it, we essentially are left with areas that have been etched and areas that are not etched. <laughs> That concludes the tour of Conformable Decoders Clean Room, the Yellow Box. Thank you for joining us. Please uh, continue joining us for an interactive live Q&A session after this. Bye. Bye.